I think if a parent was setting out to instill resilience in a boy, you know, they could think about some of this research in androgyny. They, they could even do what you might call sort of counter-socialization. You can go to almost any preschool center still. If two children look upset and begin to cry, what you often see is they'll take the girl onto their lap and sort of embrace and soothe her, and the boy, they'll stand up and say, all right, now tell me what's going on. Given the, whatever temperamental differences are, you probably should do exactly the opposite. Take the boy on your lap, stand the little girl up, and look him in the eye and say, okay, tell me. So I think there are those very specific things that you could do. Some of it is child-specific. Some of it is probably gender-specific. Um, I think that uh, an example, a good sort of um, marker is, uh, do your kids watch Mr. Rogers? There are a lot of tough neighborhoods where the very thing the kids need, probably, particularly the boys, is Mr. Rogers. And people say, no, we don't want our kids watching Mr. Rogers because he's too soft. And they're depriving them of you know, one of their hands for resilience. So I think that would certainly be part of it. I think allowing them to sort themselves out based on their individual characteristics and temperament without trying to strong arm them. It's a bit like when they used to force naturally left-handed children to write with their right hands. It was just, you know, it was a brutalization on behalf of some idea which you now say, well, what was the big fuss about? You were going to smear the ink when you wrote with your left hand. A lot of these gender things also, if people take a deep breath and relax, you know, they sort of dissipate.